So welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. We had a little snow there this morning. Most of it's uh, melted off. Right now I'm going to unload this tank here with the utmost care. This is about 100 gallons of diesel fuel. Just under 100 gallons. And off-road diesel here in Pennsylvania is up to $5.08 a gallon. This stuff's like liquid gold right here. That's what we ought to call it, liquid gold. I had about, I don't even know, 40 gallon left in this tank and I just bit the bullet and filled everything up and uh, went over and got her filled up. So at least I have fuel now. This will last me quite a while. We're going to head down to the wood yard real quick here and uh, drop off another IBC tote for Levi to fill up tomorrow. I picked up eight of these last week off my buddy Adam. I think I have uh, three more empties left. I actually called him and asked him if he had some more. I think I'll pick up eight more next week and that should be about it. It's going to get dark here soon. I got to head in the house and take care of some stuff. And uh, I will report back tomorrow morning. We have a pretty busy day tomorrow. All right, I left you guys last night. And uh, it's the next morning. And it's a beautiful morning, by the way. It is. And Melissa and I are ready to head to the airport to go to Minneapolis to the sports show. My only concern for the whole trip is Saturday, when we return Saturday night, they're calling for a bunch of snow here, but I don't know. Nothing definite. We'll just have to see. We have each other, Mike. So we made it to Minneapolis. Uh, we left Pittsburgh this morning. What time was that, Melissa? We were at the airport at 11. Yeah, we were at the airport at 11. I don't enjoy anything about flying. The only thing I do like, though, are those walkways that are moving, and you can go <laughs> like super fast on them. I do like that. That's about the only part of the day that I enjoyed. Uh, but we did get to Minneapolis. We got checked into the room, and uh, we did have a nice dinner, though. We went out to dinner. Yeah. And now we're going to head over to the sports show this evening. Uh, we're not having a meet up until tomorrow, uh, but who knows? Maybe we'll run into someone there. But uh, it's cold here. I thought it, it was cold, cold in Pittsburgh today. It's cold here. It's, it is cold. But Melissa's got a new hairdo today. Yeah. Kind of got that Farrah Fawcett looking thing going. That's what I was going for, Farrah. Old Farrah. <laughs> I don't know if Farrah did that. <laughs> well, you want to head over to the show? Yeah, let's go. A vulture. All I need you to do is lie down and play dead for a few minutes. Oh. I'm kidding you. <laughs> Can you take your hand and make a circle like this? Okay. Let's bring it up to the bird. Let's see if anything is going to happen to you. <gasps> Nothing's going to happen. I want you to grab the beak like that. Hold on to the beak. Grab it. Okay. You can let go. <laughs> Whatever you do to this bird, the bird is never going to hurt you. You know why? You're not dead yet. Okay. It's a good thing. It's a good thing, don't you think? This bird, 
the bird can tell that you're not dead and this bird can can actually smell that you're not dead. They got a great sense of smell. Did you know that about vultures? You see them up in the sky all the time. They're not looking for food up there. They're, they're sniffing those air currents. I want you guys to picture this. It's not the middle of the winter. It's not cold outside. It's mid-August in Minneapolis. It's 95 degrees outside. There's a vulture a thousand feet above the dome soaring over the city. There's nothing to eat here. But five miles away on a highway, sitting in the hot sun for a few days, is a, it's a roadkill. Been there for a few days, that means it's, it's probably perfect. It's probably all covered in, in maggots. They love maggots. To a vulture, maggots are like a side dish. Kind of like having grits for breakfast. Do you all eat grits for breakfast? Do you eat grits for breakfast? No. Do you like them? Take it to a diner tomorrow morning. Get her a little grits. They're not, uh, and make sure they're not moving, okay? It's very important. <laughs> I ate at a really cool place in town here, Hell's Kitchen. I had like this big waffle there. It was great. You guys know what I'm talking about? Okay. <sighs> God help. I, I'm a Christian. I don't know if I should go to places like that. But the, f the food was good. <laughs> you can have a seat now. <laughs> Isn't that a cool bird? So here we are at the show. And we just met a very interesting guy with some very interesting birds. I want to tell, tell them a little bit about what you do. I do a lot of traveling and I go all over the country with a very large collection of raptors, birds of prey, eagles, hawks, falcons, and owls. And these guys are uh, the stars of my show, extreme raptors. I get my birds uh, from different sources. Many of them are handicapped. These are birds that have come in from wildlife rehabilitation centers that have permanent injuries that prevent them from living in the wild. So I get birds like that. I also breed birds in captivity. I get birds from zoos that are going out of business, all kinds of things like that. And I turn them into rock stars, yeah. raptor rock stars. Right. Because I do a lot of training with them. And uh, you just saw one of my shows where I pulled a, a little show. bunny out. I pulled a white rabbit out of my hat. Actually, I pulled a falcon out of my hat. Yeah. We had yeah. a falcon coming down from the rafters in this big building that we're in. So that was I kind of exciting. <laughs> you yeah. got it on video? I got it on my phone. Yeah, I'll have to see Okay, it. Yeah, we'll have to put that in the show. <laughs> Very cool, Anyway, though. so yeah, I got some neat birds. Uh, I've got a, a beautiful bald eagle named Uncle Sam. He is really neat. Sit, and walk down there. I have always displayed my bald eagle walk in front of... Yeah, we'll walk down to meet him. I always display him in front of an American flag because people see bald eagles out in the wild, but they don't see them in front of an American flag. So I, right. I, uh, I think it just looks really cool. <laughs> well, he's beautiful. It's a real photo op. And so he's been with me, uh, I, I think this is a bird I've had for like almost 30 years. Isn't that right? Okay. I'm gonna give you a little audio. That's what a bald eagle sounds like. People, people get mistaken as to what, what a bald eagle sounds like, but it sounds a little bit like a chicken, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So he's been with me for a while. He's a great bird. He got hit by a car. He's missing uh, part of his left wing. And so he's not flying anymore. But he does pretty good being in... Imagine bald eagles that have to be outside in the cold right now. This guy has a carpeted perch. He just... We have a trout... Uh, do you know there's a trout pond here? Or a trout oh. tank. <laughs> the guy just bought me a trout at the last show. So guess what he had for dinner? A fresh trout oh. right out of there. And you can see there. there's his, uh, his wing injury. So he had fish, had a little drink after that. He'll be going to bed soon. He won't have to sit in a cold tree with icicles on him like right. some other eagles. So I do take good care of my birds and make sure they're comfortable. The other thing I do for my birds is they winter in Texas on a tropical island. They have a beautiful facility there and I have a home there. And then in May, when it gets too hot in Texas, they travel back to the Catskill Mountains of New York where I have another beautiful okay. facility. And so they don't experience any harsh right uh weather you know what and then the they're one, on the road as, as well what was the one raptor you said does real well in arizona um i have a, a desert hawk behind me desert that does hawk. real well in arizona but i tell you what i'm looking forward to this this uh, summer is i'm going to alaska the alaska state fair i'm going to be a headliner there and uh he gets to see alaska Nice. Oh, yeah, he'll love that. This guy's from Virginia. No, usually right. those bald eagles don't get up there, you know. But right. he, he's going to be, they're actually going to fly all of my birds up there at the state fair. Nice. So I don't even have to drive, Does which I'm very thankful about know. because when I drove up here, I noticed some very oh, high fuel prices for oh my, my diesel gosh. truck. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so anyway, we're, we're, we, have, we have a lot of fun. I really have a, a great life. I've been able to take my hobby uh, and turn oh, it awesome. into a 
and a wonderful career and meet meet great people like you guys. Uh, well, you have a website, I'm sure. I have a website. I don't really use it too much. Uh, you'll see pictures of me on there when I was much younger. <laughs> uh, my website's raptorproject.com, but my show is called Extreme Raptors, and that's what I've been using for a while because uh, I have a talent, believe it or not, I have a talent agent mm -hmm. who books that show uh, all over the country, including Alaska. Very cool. We do a lot of theme parks and stuff like that. So that's kind of my marketing uh, is Extreme Raptors, and my my uh, my agent does all my marketing and, and uh, sells me. Very cool. Uh, that show. So I don't even bother with my website too much. Right. It's got to be pretty. About a twenty year old website. <laughs> I look like a kid on some of those pictures. <laughs> well, we but I also also do some cool stuff. This is a, a an ad I did for Nikon. Um, Nikon was my sponsor for about twelve years and. I've promoted their equipment and in bird watching, scopes, binoculars, and things like that. Very and, uh, cool. Nikon's been very good to me. So all this, all this industry that has to go with the outdoors, as you look around at this particular show, um, it kind of works together. You know, we all work together. Whether you're into hunting, fishing, driving a four-wheeler, you need a four-wheeler when you go hunting. You know that, okay? Right. Yeah. And uh, and all the other things they have here, um, it's it's one big ball of wax to me. You know, and it's, it yeah. promotes the outdoors for kids like we're looking at right here. A lot of kids okay. really enjoyed your show there, I could tell. Oh, the kids love the show, and yeah. these are kids that have, they're inside a lot, yeah. playing with their phones. Yeah. I try to mo motivate them to get out and look at birds, go hunting, fishing, stuff like that. Right. That's what they need to be doing. Right? Well, very cool. Yeah. Good talking to you guys. Thanks. Yeah, thank you so much.